Poisson's equation. Poisson's equation describes the motion of a parcel of air moving through the atmosphere, undergoing an adiabatic process. That is, del Q is equal to zero. Let's start with the enthalpy form of the first law, where dH is equal to m c p d t, which is equal to del Q plus v d p. Because it's a an adiabatic process, del Q is equal to zero, so m c p d t is equal to v d p. What this means is that given the parcel does not exchange heat with its environment, it warms or cools as it rises or falls and adjusts to the environmental pressure. So for example, a parcel of air that ascends or rises in the atmosphere will encounter lower and lower environmental pressures and will itself expand until its pressure adjusts to the environmental pressure. As it does so, the temperature decreases, the parcel cools. As we move through this derivation, feel free to stop the video at any point. We can write the ideal gas equation in terms of the volume, written there as mRT on P, and substitute that into the enthalpy form of the first law, written as mCp dt is equal to mRT on P dp. The masses cancel on either side of the equation, and we divide through both sides by CpT to obtain dt on t is equal to r on cp dp on p. We can then integrate both sides of the equation, introducing the dummy variables of integration indicated by the dashes throughout. And we integrate between a reference level, p0, where the temperature is t0, and some arbitrary pressure p, where the temperature is t. Both sides produce a natural logarithm, and so we obtain log of t on t0 is equal to r on cp log of p on p0. On the right hand side that can also be written as log of p on p0 to the r on cp. And then if you take the natural exponent of both sides and you take t0 over on the right hand side of the equation you obtain the equation shown. t equals t0 multiplied by p on p0 to the r on cp. And so this describes how we can relate the temperature at two different pressure levels assuming that the parcel exchanged no heat with the environment. Some caveats. We use the enthalpy form of the first law and it doesn't include contributions from phase changes so there's no information about liquid or solid water forming. So the equation only holds for adiabatic motions of unsaturated air. We can assume that it's dry. We'll deal later with the idea of air that contains moisture but it isn't saturated. So what we'll do is use RD and CPD to denote the fact that we have dry air. So the specific gas constant for dry air is 287 joules per kilogram per Kelvin and that's a value worth memorizing. And CPD, the specific heat at constant pressure for dry air, is 1004 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And so their ratio, as appears in Poisson's equation, is 0.2 Let's follow a parcel of air descending through the atmosphere. It starts at a pressure P1 at a height Z1 above sea level pressure, or above the surface, where Z is zero. The parcel of air has the pressure of its environment, P1, and the temperature of its environment, T1. So it's in equilibrium, pressure equilibrium, and thermal equilibrium. Then we force the parcel to ascend dry adiabatically, so there are no phase changes and no exchange of heat of the, between the parcel and its environment. And so we end up with a parcel of new pressure P2 and a new temperature T2. In this equation, remember, temperature is in kelvins. And the pressure may be in pascals or hectopascals. Doesn't matter because it's a ratio there. So what happens here is as the parcel descends, it encounters a larger environmental pressure, and so it must contract. We get adiabatic compression of the parcel. So the environment's doing work on the parcel to raise its internal energy and increase its temperature. So let's do a calculation. Consider a parcel at pressure one, P1 of 500 hectopascals and it's going to descend dry adiabatically to a pressure of 850 hectopascals. It starts with a temperature of minus 12 degrees Celsius. What will its final temperature be? Pause the video and do the calculation. So how did you go? The new temperature T2 
is equal to the old temperature T1, which is 261.15 degrees Kelvin, multiplied by the ratio 850 on 500 to the 0.286, and that gives us 303.9 degrees Kelvin, or 30.8 degrees Celsius. So the parcel has been compressed as it's descended, and it's warmed dry adiabatically.